Welcome to episode number two, Mastermind Alliance. It's your host, Ernesto De La Paz. And don't get on my head about how I'm dropping these because we're going to be dropping these for a long time and we're going to go at our speed. So with that being said, I'm here with Vani Ocho, my special guest of the day, straight out of the A18. Get ready for a handful, y'all. If you are young artist out there if you're uh starting your clothing brand you do not want to miss this episode so with that being said welcome to the podcast my brother how you doing bro thank you for having me anytime bro anytime so before we get into our top questions well not even questions the top advice that we like to give our audience things to look out for things to overcome things to do on their journey I want people to get to know you and get to know your story. So with that being said, I want to start as simple as this. When was the first time you started rapping, bro? Man, shit, I want to say since forever, you know, I used to just listen to all the greats, you know, like Tupac, Snoop, you know, Easy, Jerry, you know, the regular stuff as a kid coming up in the West Coast. And, you know, I just used to like do their lyrics, you know what I'm saying? And then... You know, I got put on the, like the East Coast music, like Wu Tang. You know, Big Papa Nas. You know what I'm saying, Mob Deep. And um, bro, I want to say between like eleven and twelve is when I was like, let's try it for real. Mm, Cause for those that don't know, I met you, bro, when we was in high school, and you was just at school rapping. Da, 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 right, da. right. I didn't even go to that school. You was at Chatsworth. Yeah. And I was just. Up there because I was my friend Brian played on a uh, fig. He played on the on the yeah, Chester basketball Brian team, Figueroa. and then my boy Chad was on their travel team. That's my dog. And um, it first started because I used to love shooting dice. Oh, this nigga, yeah, and, man. and the lead. yeah, T the lead, and, and we we used to have our circles and stuff. But besides that, I used to notice, bro, you you was rapping, and people would 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 like. It was like a performance at school. Like, you know, in the movies when you see the cool kids and then you just see the yeah. kid that's rapping. It was literally that. Yeah, man. You know, shit. In our off time, it was either football or we was going to, you know, listen to some music and bust these rhymes and shit. I, I, you know, at first I didn't want to. Like, you know, I was a little, a little shy about it. But then, I don't know, I started having fun and, you know, just got comfortable with myself early. And we're just like, fuck it, let's let's spit. You feel me? Hey man, I'm and I'm glad you did, bro. Cause even this relationship, the way me and you got close was because of that. Like I, yeah. I really looked up to you in that sense of like you, you didn't you didn't care about putting your art out there for people. Right, right, man. Cause you know, you gotta be fearless as as far as like what you wanna portray and what you want people to reciprocate and what you wanna, you know, give off into the world and you know, you got to be fearless in, in this art game because it's an opinionated sport, so it's not really right or wrong. Mm. It's just a, a lot of different uh, perspectives, you know what I'm saying? So you see and you hear everybody's opinion, and you're still trying to keep your own, you know? Mm, that's, so. damn, that, that, that's, a, that's a gem in itself right there. Yeah, man. Yo, and, um, okay, so... You said you started as a child looking up to all these artists around 11. You're like, okay, let me let me try and play around with these rhymes. Fast forward to when I kind of met you in high school. Yeah. So before we get all that information, I want to take it back, back. Like, where are you from? Where are you born? Um, what are your parents like? What's the ethnicity? Well, shit, man. I'm, uh, I'm from, you know, the San Fernando Valley. You know, I grew up in Pacoima, like damn near all my life, but we was in Van Nuys, like, I want to say, we kind of moved around a lot, Van Nuys, Chatsworth, Reseda, you know, um, moms, moms was Rolling Stone, she had us going a lot of different places, but I, I mainly, you know, hometown was, was Pacoima, you feel me, we, we moved there after the 94 earthquake, mm. and um, shit, bro, Grew up on the East Valley, you know what I'm saying? The West Valley was fun because the West Valley was, like, newly developed, but the East Valley was kind of, like, the more cultural, older side of town, mm-hmm. if I want to say that. And, uh, man, just, you know, it grew up, like, black and brown, you know what I'm saying? My my family got, you know, some, some Creole and shit like that in it. But, you know, every black person supposedly Indian <laughs> or Creole. Right. <laughs> so... 
Yeah, man, got some indie here too, man. And um, yeah, bro, just uh, came up like that. Like my family came from Oklahoma. Uh, my dad came when he was like 15, like the 60s and 70s. Damn. And then my mom came out here when she was like, she was like 20. So, you know, they had that dream of moving to California and living a better life. So I always try to, you know, go back to that when I be like, damn, that was really one of their life goals. Like I'm here chilling. Like, you know, a lot of people dying to get to California. Bro, and not just out here chilling you out here living it like you out here yeah. like that's 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 cool to hear bro I, i'm i'm glad that your parents are living they dream through you like e- even if you n- didn't really recognize that or right you know, right like, yeah man it's a you know they took it to a certain level then you got to take it to another level and then your kids gotta you know be a bigger level than you and um you know just each one teach one and you know just be grateful and humble and try to pay attention to, like, patterns and stuff, you know, generational things that you want to bring to the next generation or you don't want to bring to the next generation. A hundred percent. And I want to give you your flowers, bro, because I grew up in the Valley around the same time that you did, and and guess what? It, it's not like it is now. Like, people yeah. wanting to collab. No, nah, it was really like, fuck y'all, <laughs> and yeah. this is us. Y'all black, we're brown. Like, bro, even myself, I came from Dominican Facts. Republic. Depending who was asking, I would I would have to fake if I'm Latino or black. Because not to the blacks, I was black. To the Latinos, I was Latino. Like, no, excuse me. To the blacks, I was Mexican. To the Mexicans, I was black. So <laughs> nobody accepted me. So it's not like how it is now. Like now, you somebody say they Dominican, niggas be like, oh, Bad Bunny. <laughs> nigga, no. d- did not nobody know a Dominican back then, and and I remember what it was growing up in the valley. Like it wasn't that welcoming. So I want to give you your flowers, bro, for taking leadership in the valley, not just with your music, but with your clothing. Yeah, and and that again, that takes a lot of fucking courage, bro. Yeah, bro, it's all about you know. One of my goals always been for the city is is be hands on. You know what I'm saying? Proactive. You know, I never wanted to be one of the people that say they do this and that for the city or they claim the city so tough, but they never gave nothing back. Mm. You know? Like, you know, even if it's not money, they never tried to get no energy back at least. You know what I'm saying? And it's funny that you say that, claiming the city, because even like everybody, when they think Hollywood, when they think Calif- like Los Angeles, you wouldn't believe how many of your favorite actors, rappers, really resonated in the valley. Yeah, live but right here. but the minute they get on the podcast and and and, and or the, people ask them where you from, the first thing they say is what L.A. LA Hollywood. Nobody was banging. No. Um, the valley. Nobody. Nobody wanted to. To be wave from that the valley, flag. yeah. Nobody wanted to be like, "Yo, I'm from over there." You know what I'm saying? Exactly. It was, it was, it was looked down upon, right? Yeah. It was like, what the fuck? Why would you tell somebody that? Right. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> so now, now I look back. You know, it was all to me. It was always about just being yourself mm. because you get comfortable being yourself. You don't have to lie. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like when you comfortable with yourself. You don't give a fuck who knows what, whatever. You know, you just stand in your truth. and um, That fire doesn't die. You, you, yeah. You get to just burn this bitch down with your truth. Your truth will uh, lead the way. It'll light the path. You feel me? The fire. So that's always just been the thing. Like, even being original is all about truth. Like, you to your furthest extent. One thing I really appreciate about the Valley, bro, and I, that's why I got it tattooed on me. Like, I, yeah. I came from DR, but I was raised in the Valley. And one thing I really love about the Valley was we could be our fucking selves. If you was from L.A., around the times we was growing up out here, you had to choose a side, nigga. It, it, was, it was red or blue, or are you going to do Hoover? Or like... Yeah. If you was from the valley, niggas would be like, ah, oh, he he a valley nigga. Like, yeah, you over there. <laughs> which 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 kind of worked in our favor as creatives. It did. It worked in our favor for sure. Right? Because we wasn't being judged if we try to do a little this or wear something like this. Yeah. Because they wasn't really looking for us. 
Yeah, so like our style wasn't really boxed in. It was more of like still a social experiment. You feel me? Bingo. Yeah. So, so that's why like with my with the next generation who come after me, my whole thing I'm pushing to them is like, man, be yourself and don't get stuck to like one persona or one thing because we grew up in a city where it's a grip of culture and a grip a grip of different outlooks. So it's like. You don't have to just be a certain type of anything. You exactly. Know what I'm that is the beautiful part about the valley. It's it's the valley, but within this valley, you got Pacoima, San Fernando, Northridge, Taft, Woolen Hills, Van Nuys, North Hollywood, Encino. It's so much that makes it just a pot of gumbo. Yeah, it's a pot of gumbo. It's a, it's definitely a big pot, and um, it's. It's somewhere like you would you would definitely be able to get a lot of culture and, and find out a lot of information of different races. You know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. I got friends who Sri Lankan, like that's a small island, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I don't even know Sri Lankan. Yeah, is. like in the valley, if you got ten friends, five of them is probably a different race. Facts. Exactly. <laughs> Feel me. A hundred percent. And in the valley, um, there's a lot of Filipinos and stuff. Right, like right. Hella it, Filipinos. We, you really get to mix with these people's culture c- compared to like if you go Pasadena, these people only fuck with themselves. Facts, yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. the Valley is very fucking unique and um, I- I'm proud to come from the Valley, man. And and I'm glad that we out here pushing this narrative and we, we, didn't, we didn't let the outside LA, Hollywood change our Valley-ness. In yeah, sense. yeah. We didn't become them because like... A lot of people, um, out-of-towners, they come to certain cities and they influence them. You know, you start hearing people start saying certain stuff from other places. Mm -hmm. I feel like the Valley was always cool because we already know about it's a group of people coming to influence. You feel me? So we was able to just stay ourselves through all of it. Like, we get to experience a lot of different cultures and outlooks and still be ourselves. Facts. And yeah, man, shout outs to whole A1A, all the creatives. You know what I'm saying? We about to get our our due soon, so keep working hard. Yes, sir. And then, brother, where did this come from like this? Because nobody just wakes up as a kid and and goes, I'm going to be a leader. I'm going to stand up for what's right. I'm going to stand for originality. Where do you think this was kind of like embedded in you? For me, it was the Pop Warner days. Yeah, man. It was, uh, you know, sports was always a big thing. Like, either you lead or you be led, you know? That part. And... (laughs) I'd be, you know, I'm a skeptic at heart, so I'd be like, man, I'd rather leave myself. You feel me? At least if I fuck up, it's on me. Facts. And if, because it's okay, like, if somebody has the vision to be led until you figure out your vision. Mm. Like, if, if you don't have a vision, like, as far as, like, direction, but you got passion, it's nothing wrong with following somebody who got the vision, because that person might got the vision, but don't got the passion. That part. So... You know that everything weighs out, so I just always try to like be like, you know what, do or die, I'm gonna do. You mm. know what I'm saying? And I'm not gonna wait for somebody else to be responsible for me. You know, as like a man, that's how I, my whole outlook is. Is like you responsible for you, no matter how much you try to put blame on anything. Mm. It start with you. So yeah, man, that's always the whole leader thing. I. I'd rather just, you know, if I make the mistake, it's on me. And if I win, I win too, you know? Bet, bet. So we got to hear a little bit where the influence of music came from from from, from you. But how about the style? Man. What influenced your style? And at what age did, did it start? Have you always been into, like, making your own custom clothes or, or, or swagging up your style? Or did did you come around somebody that, that, that had that? or was- I think my first time really wanting to make shirts was, like, around the, the crump era. You feel me? Yeah. Like, I was in junior high, and I remember niggas used to like get put on the dance teams, mm-hmm. and spray they, paint in the shirts. Yeah, and they shit. spray paint their shirt. You feel me? So I used to be mad because I'd be like, "This nigga got his own shirt. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, like what? Like an air? Like, like, bro? And I wanted to do that. And even airbrush shirts too. Airbrush shirts was big. I remember niggas going to the swap meeting like. You know, you see the airbrush shirt, and you know that that nigga paid money because it's his shirt. You Facts. know what I'm saying? Like, it's his personally. So, Facts. nigga, I got into puff paint. My cousin and them, they was like, nigga, Mesquine was big. Like, that. I don't know, you, all that I damn remember. paint, man. So, 
Bro, my cousins and them got hip because they was real big Dipset fans, you feel me? Mm. So niggas was making their own jeans, like started putting all the puff paint from Michaels on the whole fit. So <laughs> I, I started learning how to draw a little bit. Mm. And um, I knew how to do certain characters, like, you know, certain Looney Tunes and shit with the puff paint. Yeah. So I would just charge niggas at school like 15, 20 bucks. Like I was in seventh grade. And I remember buying a five dollar pro club and customizing that shit. Yeah, for somebody at school. It's funny you say the Looney Tunes because that's what niggas had. Niggas had like the, <laughs> I, I I had them with the Tasmanian Devil. Come on, and come then, on. And then uh, niggas had um a uh, bunny. B- the Bugs, 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 Bugs bunny. That was a popular one. Niggas had that yeah, one. Yeah, Bugs was everywhere. That yeah, was, Lot Twenty Nine really fucked that up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Y'all, um, where where did you go to middle school? Man, I went to Lawrence Middle School mm. down the street from a uh, Chatsworth High School where I went to high school at because. See, in my neighborhood, I had went to this, uh, it was like an all-black Christian school called Calvary Christian. Mm. And then, you know, shit, down the street from my house was McClay. You mm. know what I'm saying? And my parents drove buses and shit, so they knew, like... Not there. Yeah, nigga, they knew what schools, the LAUSD, to be like, we, we gonna send you there, we ain't gonna send you here. So I ended up at Lawrence with the homie. What a cheat code right there. You just, you just, you, you that makes sense why you didn't go to school on yeah, that side of town because you yeah. grew up over there. Right. And even myself, when I met you, I'm like, how this nigga from Pacoima, but he over here in Chatsworth? Because, yeah, you know, man. again, in the Valley, we don't discriminate, but we kind of do against yeah. certain areas. In certain areas. You're like, like hold up. doing over there? <laughs> right. Because the, 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 Chatsworth area is a little more money over there. Facts. You feel me? Yeah, Chatsworth for sure having bread, bro. Like, so, I, I didn't know. That me. makes sense how you, how you ended up over there. Yeah, bro. My mom... um, my mom and my dad was real big on the whole education and social thing. Mm. So they was like, oh, yeah, you ain't about to be, you know, running the muck at Silmar. Because Silmar was lit at that time, for sure. Fa- oh, facts. Yeah. And and back then, look, nowadays, you, not to be bang- gang banging on here, but you got the Pac-10, you got the San Fernando. They always been killing each other forever. Right, right, but around right. the time we was in school, was these really two bad. people was killing Blacks. Yeah. <laughs> it was it was bad. It was straight blacks. It or was, even if you look black, like it, yeah. it was green light on you, bro. Like remember that, you couldn't wear a white tee on single de Mayo, nigga. A whole lot of niggas missed school that day. I remember that. Blacks. I missed school too, nigga. I was like, what? You heard that rumor? They was like, Yeah, the one where if you wear a white tee to school. Yeah, my mom and my pops heard that little rumor, that little thing. It was like, yeah, nah, you ain't going, bro. Not today, bro. Nigga, I don't even think I, matter of fact, I don't even think I went for the rest of the week, nigga. I was <laughs> like, I was like, they was like, yeah, you can kick it this week. I said, for sure. Nah, it, it, I went to Madison Middle School, and over there it was big um, with the Mexicans and Armenians. It wasn't yeah. really Mexicans and blacks. Like, over there it was a lot of Armenians, so it was like... It got it got fucked up, man. It's like the same though, the, the same type of scenario. Yeah. You know, so so I I get it. I see. I'm glad I'm glad your parents made that smart ass decision, bro. Yeah, cause we I feel like in our era, see, racism is seen on camera now. You feel me? Right, nigga. We were seeing it when it wasn't on camera. Like nigga, you was getting full quality, like right there. You see HD, bro. Yeah, bro. And you funny. You say that. That's crazy. And nowadays, it's more racism towards like gay people and yeah. like they're fighting their war now. B- yeah. Back in our time, it was really like there was no internet. You and uh, the internet tends to kind of like s- soften shit up. So you'd be like, oh, he's being racist, but it- right. it's easy to deal with. Like our racism was in fucking person, bro. Like right. Hitler to style. Your face, yeah, shit was cold, dog. It was no such thing as like. I could go leave a comment and be racist. <laughs> yeah, nah. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, you ate that. It was like you see me in person, and it was a fuck you, and it was a big fuck you. Yeah, yeah and like, and we felt it. We knew why. It, there was no miscommunication. <laughs> yeah, and these people was ready to fuck you up because of it, and it was it just it is what it was. And again, thank God, we're not in those times anymore. And um, as a culture, as a as a society, we've we've risen out of that shit. Because uh, together, we're a lot stronger, man. Definitely, A man. lot stronger. So, okay, cool. That makes sense. Now I see how you ended up over there in that Chatsworth side. Right. Because once you go to school, like a middle school in a certain area, you kind of going to go to high school in the area because the friends translate. It's right there. You're yeah. Just, and, like, you know how it go. It's sectioned off. Like, 
all right, I go to this junior high. Well, I've been going over here this long. I might as well just go to the high school. Yeah, and I fuck with this people, and I'm low-key still trying to fuck her, so yeah. fuck it. Let's just go over there. <laughs> bro, yeah, you got me thinking out, bro. <laughs> you hear that last day of eighth grade, and then you like, shit, who? Oh, back when people were signing notebook, uh, take care, because I care? Yeah, that type of shit. <laughs> with that damn with the t-shirt. Remember, you, yeah. you bring a, your, your P-E-Y-T. Exactly, and, and have everybody sign it. sign it. That was autographed for the niggas that didn't get the yearbook. Damn. <laughs> Yo, so you was making shirts in middle school. Right, right. And then how did, how did that translate like, over into like, high school and, and fashion-wise? And, and what... what what um impact did that have on? I was like the bootleg man. You feel me? Like uh. early in junior high, so I I had to mix CDs. Like you give me a list, mm. like so a mix CD was three dollars, and then the whole album was five. You feel me? There it is. So like, bro, you know, I already kind of did was doing music a little bit, but I wasn't recording or nothing like that. You know what I'm saying? So I'm I'm getting into the fashion. And then I'm starting to like lean into the music, and you know niggas at my school, you know how it is when you coming up. Oh, he rap. Well, oh, he rap. Right. So you know you just connecting with the kids at the school that are like that do what you do. Mm-hmm. And then um, in high school, in high school it let it followed me. You feel me? Because we used to battle rap like in eighth grade. You know that was around the time YouTube battle rap was so huge. You know, right. That shit. So. We used to just fuck around and like battle during like lunchtime and shit like that, or like PE. And then in high school, we start taking it a little more serious because certain people would come from certain schools to battle you. Mm. Like remember, like the Crump era niggas. Used yes. To like so, the Crump era led to like niggas having to start battle rapping too. You feel me? Facts. So I remember these times. It was good. Yeah. And, and it was it, it was all playful creativeness. Like again, we're in the valley. Right. Like, shit like this wasn't happening in LA. Niggas it was going to from schools to school to beat each other up. Facts. In LA. Yeah. That shit was happening in the valley too. But for some reason, the valley's like creative side of things was up and popping. Yeah, bro. We had the par- the flyer parties. Like we used yeah. to like bro, if nigga, if you wanted to get in with the girls and you wasn't really a ladies man, nigga, you start off as a party promoter. You go get some flyers and you walk up to them and try to, hey, come to the party, you feel me? Like simple as that. Can you give me in for free? Yeah, I got you. I got you. Yeah. <laughs> Let me get your number uh, so I can make sure to put you on the list. You know what I'm saying? That's the times we grew up in. And I just remember um, just coming up in that, man, and I started falling in love with music even more. You know, the blog air had started popping while I was in high school, and then I was listening to, like, the cool kids, man, and these is the niggas that kind of, like, I want to say I got my style from for sure because, you know, the retro the retro Jordans and then the acid wash jeans and the 100 shirts and mm-hmm. the fucking the SBs and them niggas had the motherfucking the bikes, you know, Doing crazy shit. Chuck English and Mikey Rocks was like, nigga, they was the ones. You feel me? Like, T- Tisa was like the bigger version of what they brought out first. You know what I'm saying? Like, when Facts. they did the whole snapback Tisa joint and the old retro, that bro, was like. Even that Tisa way was nuts, yeah, yeah, bro. bro. What happened to him? Well, shit, he was with Kanye. Oh, okay. I think. I think um, I don't know. I remember him being with Yeezy for a minute, like from at least like 2011 to 2014. Damn, my Taz boy. Arnold. Yeah, Taz Arnold. My boy, uh, SB the photographer, was real cool with him. So that's how I knew Taz and shit. And had that. He, we were, pro- he probably like just ghost producing, like as far as like clothing. Like you never know. He might work for a big brand or something. Facts. Now, nah, yeah, because that nigga had, he, he, he had he his had finger the on the pulse, bro. He had the fits, bro. Yeah, bro. Even the long pants that niggas is doing now. Yeah, he was he, on he, that. He was on that shit back then, boy. He was wearing cowboy boots. Like, yes. Years ago. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Damn, bro. And and I'm from what I'm hearing, bro, it, it's um you you got into this fashion stuff. You you were kind of messing around with music, but then fashion is like cheat codes. And I I kind of feel like under, the, once you started understanding, like making the bootleg CDs and learning the cheat codes mm-hmm. of the clothes, you kind of took that energy into the music. Right. Because if you listen to Vonnie's music even today or even back then, very calculated, very put together, very like it's a skill. Like it, like this person's not just here freestyling. Like 
that's something I always appreciated about your music, bro. Thank you, man. It's, you know, it is all about the details. I want to say you got me thinking about all the clothes and, like, all the stuff we put into it, like, fashion, rapping. I feel like it's kind of all the same, in my opinion, because, like, you want somebody to live their lifestyle through you. Mm. So... If it ain't music, you want them to dress or act like you. Like, remember back in the day where you could see when, like, other races fuck with hip-hop? I, I used to love that shit. Yeah, like, you could tell, like, oh, they fuck with hip-hop. Now it's, like, regular, like, every race look like they fuck with hip-hop. 100%. Yeah. But back then, it wasn't it like, oh, wait, if they fuck with hip-hop, they might fuck with me. Right. So right. it, it kind of gave you that, like, confidence to approach them. Right. Because, again, back in the day, it was real fuck you you versus us. So if you were not us, don't fucking talk to us. Yeah, don't talk to us. So it's funny you say that because, um, yeah, that, you're, that's that's a big fact about it. And and, and it was a really refreshing, like seeing an Asian dude like sag his clothes or, 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 or do a long shirt or an uh, Asian dude throw the Cortezes on. Right. Like it, it was just fun, bro. And, and being in the Valley, you got to see a lot of different races and races is, Doing that and adopt hip hop and adopt certain styles, like even yeah. even like black culture. You feel me? Like, you know, it was a lot of skateboarding going on out here, a big time. Yeah, so, uh, yeah. Uh, Paul Rodriguez, all these people again, people that the world looks up to. You don't understand these people from the valley come straight from here. Yeah, and they and the movement, I feel like will be even is going to be even crazier and more stronger because a lot of the natives is starting to understand. What's going on around us? Mm, and we're, we're starting to understand the power. Yeah, of the city. Because for so long, you know, to be from L.A., get your right of passage, that's what it was all about. You know, oh, I'm from L.A. Mm -hmm. But when you know, people is like, nah, I'm from over here. You feel me? It's a whole different, like, well, show me what's going on over here. Like, it's a chance to kind of audition and show the culture of what's going on. Big, you said that perfect, bro. Because uh, even back in the day, again, you and I, our our, our personalities were very prideful. So right. I was one of, like, in a group where niggas be like, oh, I'm from L.A., I'm from L.A. Even if some people that was with me was, nigga, you from the Valley. Shut up. We from Van Nuys, bro. We we go to Van Nuys High School. I was I would be the beacon. Like, even when we used to do the UCLA football camps, Right. everybody there that played at Chatsworth or... Uh, Crespi, oh, I'm from LA. I used to bang my shit. I used to be like, no, I'm from Van Nuys High School. I'm from the Valley, bro. Yeah, and bro. I love it. And and now, like you're saying, people that are from out here, they're starting to see the take more pride in that. And it, it's a beautiful thing. It makes me feel amazing because it makes me feel good for standing up back in the day. Because fast forward to now, everybody doing it. So it's like yeah. I was kind of ahead of the curve, but not ahead of the curve. I just always knew what was right and I'm glad I didn't fall into crowds and shit. We just no, nah, we just building the foundation for the next generation cuz mm. that's all it's about. It's Facts. just laying the foundation and mm -hmm. you know, the foundation gets stronger and stronger. Big facts. Big facts. That's dope. So we you you uh from so from middle school, you uh you went to chats with all four years? Yeah, I went to Chester for all four years, luckily. <laughs> okay. And then, so you, you were playing, besides football, you play any other sports? Nah, well, we you know, did track, like, um, shock put type shit. You know, right, they, right. they wanted the big niggas to always do shock Facts. Put. No, all the linemen, all the middle line yeah. backers, they, because the, the, the receivers would go do the 100 yard dash. Right. But then the linemen wanted to be part of that track shit too, because they wanted to be part of the girls in the off season. Right. So they, them niggas got quick to throw them, them metal balls yeah, across the nigga. field, nigga. So, so, yeah, in high school, besides track and football and baseball, I went and played volleyball, nigga. Word. You know why? I got tired of track, nigga. I got all tired that, of all, all that, that running. running I said, bro, I'm about to go inside here. These girls got booty shorts and there's fucking AC, bro. Bruh. <laughs> Bruh. And they y'all they y'all sisters too, like the like the team, the whole little organization. Yes. So in school, niggas be like, how you know that Asian bitch? Nigga, volleyball. Yeah, she got them volleyball. Before you knew it, the whole basketball team was playing volleyball. <laughs> what, nigga? 
volleyball girls just to be battered and chilling. Just. Yo, one thing I give your school in our time, I think they probably still got one of the crazy cheerleaders ever. But and back when we was in school, y'all cheerleaders at Chatsworth oh, and Cleveland? Man. Man. Damn. I used to be like, fuck, this is the real high school experience over here. Bro, oh, God, man. Because on the other side of the valley... <laughs> Our cheerleaders was not it, nigga. Not it at all. <laughs> and you and you could tell on some schools they be like, nah, our cheerleaders is not popping. That's not what it's about but over Cleveland, here. Cleveland, you yeah, Cleveland, child surfing, it was a uh, Taff was hit or miss. Some years they Some years popping. was good, some years not. You're right. Yeah. You're right. You got me reminiscing about it. I'm like, damn. And you know I suck fucked up some of the good ass cheerleader squads. They team be ass. You go just for the ass. That's it. I'm like, for sure. You going That's just, it. just for the ass. That's it. Their routines was shit. Yeah, bro. You <laughs> Jerseys going. is ass. Uniforms whack. But the game popping. Right. Right. Remember, that used to be the worst. Like, the, the team with the worst record always had the popping game going on. The Nigga. facts. What? The, the parking lot going up and they fighting and shit. Man, good times, man. To live, to live and be from the valley, man. That's just crazy. Yeah. Okay, so... Now that we got to understand your story and we got to get to know you a little more and know where you come from and what you about. Um, but man, hold up. Before we even get to the, the 10 advices or the 10 different things you, you want to you wanna recommend to people and just put out there, uh, what happened after high school? Um, wh- where did things go after that? Well, shit. Play football. You know, I had... Um I didn't pass the. I didn't take the SAT. I took the ACT. Same here, bro. So and we couldn't. We could, we wasn't eligible for them scholarships. Right. So they tried to detour us. Yeah, man. And I was trying to go to UNLV at the time just because it was in Vegas and it was just close. And they was giving scholarships. Right. You feel me? It was giving them. They, I remember when we was at the UCLA camps and shit. Yeah. So niggas knew. Niggas knew. Niggas was 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 in that circuit of shit. Right, bro. but they never really put them grades on us. Like, bro, them schools we went to wasn't really like on kids at the time like that. They 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 if you you got a three point eight or whatever you could play cool, but they wasn't really preparing you for the transition into them scholarships, man. Yeah, bro, because my my coach did my grades when I got to JC. I had um basically. You know, I was like, yo, coach, I got to go see my counselor. Like, you know, I'm trying to do my classes. Oh, don't worry. I'll, I'll hook your classes up, make sure you're eligible and shit, right? Yeah. So, bro, you get your you get your schedule, and you just trusting them. Right, just, trusting the coach, thinking it's good. But then on the off season, you starting to get letters, like, from schools right. that's fucking with you, right? Right. And then they be like, send me your transcript. And that's where that shit go to shit. Then you get that fucking little call like, look, man, we really like what you do. We really we really think you'll be fit for our, you know, program. But, nigga, you owe four math classes, two English classes, a speech class. Who the fuck did your shit? You feel me? And then you be looking at your coach like, damn, so nigga, fuck me, huh? Like, and fuck all that other shit I was doing. Yeah, like, I'm out here doing, nigga, seven. 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. and this what the fuck going on? So, I was, so they really, they really, man, they set us up for failure. Yeah, bro. So my second year of football at JC, I'm receiving letters, but I'm kind of like a little jaded. Like fuck this nigga. Like I don't want to play ball no more because yeah. it, it was like, it was like the nigga doing me grimy. Why am I about to be out here running gasher sprints? And then, but my classes ain't right. And then the schools that want me, I can't even go. Yeah, no facts. So, bro, they used to fuck us, bro. They really, I don't even want to get into that shit because, man, it gets deep. Bro, I'm telling you. So, they was telling me, like, yo, come to junior college out here. You could, you could practice with us, but you, you don't have no official paperwork with us. That, th- that, uh, what they call it, the third red shirt or, uh, yeah, you second got, year red shirt. Se- second year freshman red shirt. Bro, second. that shit used to make me sick, bro. I used, I'll, you Cause know I'm better like, than the starting dude. Yeah, and ain't nobody trying to take a year off football. Any nigga that could take a year off football and then go play again a different dude. Cause once you stop getting hit, like, bro, your body be like, I ain't doing this shit again. You exactly. You, it, you get to the point where your body start, like, going into maturity. Like, yeah. Like, and once that maturity, knee aches start to come into play, and the, that lower back, and 
Yeah. Yeah, bro. <laughs> you ain't gonna be able to just go run full full speed and hit somebody like you was. Like if you take a year off, you gotta really be prepared for that. But right. Long story short, yeah, bro. The classes got fucked up. I was just playing the game to be playing the game, and then I was like, I want to rap. So my second year of um, college, you know, the letters is coming in, but I still got to do more school, and I'm kind of like, fuck school, because, like, you know, you broke. You know what I'm saying? Facts. I can't eat Little Caesars every day. And not know? just that, you, 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 yo, that's it's funny you say that. The football team niggas, we always fucked them $5 pieces. Bro, up. That bro. That shit was heavy. Boy, that shit hold you through the whole day. <laughs> that shit was heavy. Or we go to McDonald's and make the uh, that, cheeseburger McChicken sandwich. The gangbang, nigga. The gang, yeah, 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 we did that. We, we lived really that. from that era, bro. Max sauce, nigga. All that. And, uh, but uh, what I was going to say is, um, so right there, you said fuck that. And, nigga, you 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 a rapper and deep down you a you a fashionista nigga yeah so all that going to school not making money that shit was out it, it got it got real old because i'm sitting there like i'm doing what i'm supposed to do but i'm not in the right classes and then i'm like am i going to school to just waste my fucking time you know because we had a lot of niggas around us that was clearly doing that and yeah. the last thing we wanted to be is like them yeah, you know how that shit go. You bounce from one JC to this JC to it's this over. JC. It's over. And you the see niggas practicing four different teams and shit. Facts. Going from Valley College to Pierce College to... Moore Park. <laughs> yeah, yeah, That's bro. niggas' careers right yeah, there for bro. the Valley, nigga. Yeah, nigga. That shit. <laughs> I'll be like, bro, I'm done. I'm done playing. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah, but my pops was trying to kick me out. So he was like... Nigga, you want to rap so bad, go live with your homies. So I was like, man, nigga had to play this last year of football, you feel me? Mm. So I had a good-ass season, but I still didn't really give a fuck about football at that time, you feel me? Got you. you yeah, of, your, your heart was broken already. Yeah, and plus I was like, if niggas is doing that on this level, I said, bro, you get to a higher level, it's going to get even crazier. It's more fuckery, and, and which was true. Yeah, bro. It was true. It, in our times, it... it Doing what we did was the smart route. Right. And like, bro, Which is crazy to even say that. It was way more athletes, I think, in our time, though. Way more. Way what? More. Now I don't see like, like, I don't know. Bro, like, Milton Knox, uh, Fred Wimborn from Grant. Uh, nice. Like, I could go crazy right now with the list. And, and, I, and, and that's just football. Basketball was lit, too. But, but, bro, back in the day, these fuck, there was so much more corruption as far as like, like, Schools paying people under the table, yeah. like there was so much shit that years later finally hit the news. You feel me? So it was just like fuck, like like Reggie Bush was going through regular shit, but it made it to the news. You feel me? Exactly, exactly. Like and 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 look what they did to him. But in that time, all athletes was doing that. That was normal. Like yeah, for us, that many. that was regular. That was regular. UCLA camps we went to was free. Like, it's <laughs> not paid for that. Every other kid there was, though. Like, Facts. just different shit like that, you know? So, okay. So, you would say out of, after this second year in college, this is kind of where the music and... Yeah, and like, we... Basically, I had a um, I had a crew I came up with first called Crooks. You feel me? It was like oh yeah, I remember Crooks, Lexi Crook. Um, yep. Yeah, I, I remember that. I really do remember that. Yeah, we started off as a group first, so like... I have formed this group while I'm like, you know, in school. Mm. So after I get out of football every day, that's what I'm thinking about. And I don't know, I was just falling more in love with like being my own like boss, you feel me? Mm. And uh, with music, you know, music don't pay up front. You got to figure out a way for it to pay up front. So mm -hmm. y'all started throwing parties and shit. Yeah, we was throwing events. Mm -hmm. And then I remember this. I had a homie, you feel me, who did like, he did graphic design. He used to come over and used to teach me certain shit. And then he had did like some show merch for us. Like we did like like a dozen of them. You feel me? But all the homies bought their own. And then we had a dozen of them. And um, bro, it was cool. Like I started selling clothes, and I was like, man, I want to do this shit again because it was kind of fun. Like 
Yeah. You make up an idea in your head and then everybody agree with it. You feel me? And like they willing to pay money for the idea. And nothing like getting that cash, baby. Up front. You know what I'm Shh. saying? So nothing like it. So we had started getting like some uh internet sponsors like Mishka Clothing, like the hundreds. So we started getting sponsors. And then um, yeah, bro, I kind of was like falling out of love with football because nigga was just like, bro. This shit a waste of time. Like, I'm going to have to spend a whole nother year in school. Mm -hmm. And I didn't really, like, was moving on. I wasn't moving on that type of time where, like, I was willing to give up a whole year to just study and go be an athlete. Right. No, yeah. Especially when you you got crooks that's cooking up. Yeah. You getting recognition, not just in the Valley, but, again, now the L.A. side is starting to be like, wait, who are these people over here doing this? Yeah. And, and and then now you're making clothes that's actually funding your pockets. Right. And allowing you not to just create clothes, but feed yourself, smoke the good weed you want to smoke. And, and be able to create freely, you know, because yeah. cause shout outs all the artists, you know, that, that do, you know, got a nine to five and they take, they, they check and they pay their bills and still be an artist. That shit is not, it's not easy to do. Mm -hmm. Especially like... You taking your money to something free mm. and then hoping it's going to bring the money back. Hoping. You know what I'm saying? And, and yeah, taking your money, that's something that's free that hopefully with your creativity and your little investment, it could become something. Right. So it's it, it, it does. It, it, it's, man, the love of, of creating, man. Yeah, the love of sacrifice too, you mm -hmm. know? So yeah, bro, I just kind of just was like, fuck football. After the season, you know, a lot of coaches and shit was hitting me up. I kind of just disconnected from all of that. And then I went into my music real heavy with my group. And then I want to say from like 2011 to like 2014, like, you know, we opened up for like Travis Scott and Casey Veggies. And then we had did like Yo Gotti and YG mm -hmm. and uh, some shit with Problem. And then, you know, we was a crew. And then like around 2016, you know, life started hitting. So it was like five years, we ain't pop chat and shit, and, mm -hmm. and niggas kind of was like, well, I'm going to go this way, mm -hmm. you know? So it wasn't like no hard feelings, but then I went through a little thing from like 2016 to 2018 where like I wanted to make music, but I was like, this shit costs, man, and like I'm getting older in my 20s and shit, and I'm like, bro... I need something that's paying me because I'm not making no money. Mm -hmm. Like, when you look at me, when you look at me, the first thing people always going to ask is, where does his finances come from? Do he work at the grocery store? Mm -hmm. What does he do? You know what I'm saying? Gotcha. So, um, I was going through that, like, fighting stability, trying to find out what I wanted to do. And then in 2018, I met a re Ed, who's like the... He's like the art director for Cookies. Mm -hmm. I met him through a close friend, Eddie Perez, who's like Yo Gotti's like a photographer. Mm. And I told him I wanted like some comic book, like, you know, type get down for my next projects and shit. And Eddie was like, I got the perfect person for you. So Ed, Eddie bought me Ed, you feel me? Got you. I remember that cover with the Boondocks looking yeah, characters. Yeah, and he... um. He came through, man, so we had a talk, and then he started making all of my stuff, like my SFV logo, my Ocho's logo, Damn. like all, all my key pieces, you feel me, Ed had made, and um, at first it was like a gamble, because I wasn't used to like, I wasn't used to putting like a, a big amount of money for fashion, mm. you feel me, like... It was like a time, like I was used to putting like 300, 400 bucks up. You know what I'm saying? Now we starting to do pop-ups and they- Thousands. Yes, yeah, it's, it's like 3000 to $10,000, like to really do some like- Damage and, and make a statement. Yeah, and to like really be able to break even and pay some bills, you feel me? That part. Yeah, so like with him, you know, he uh he hooked me up, you know what I'm saying? He got me to where I needed to go. Shout outs, we are Ed. He, he definitely was like, like the vision, like I was the direction, but he was like the vision as far as like he could see it. You know mm. what I'm saying? Like I knew where to direct it, but he for sure was like, nigga, the vision is this. I see it on the wall, you know? So shout out to him, bro. That's big. Yeah, man. So then I start, um, you know, 
my tapes was going good with him. I'm putting out music. And then, like, around 2020, I gambled on myself again because my merch was getting big. And um, I was like, fuck it, man. I need a store. You feel me? And um, my boy, uh, shout out to John Drino. You know what I'm saying? We went to high school together, and he was big into the vintage scene, and he had a store called Playoffs. And I had been going to playoffs to, you know, buy clothes, smoke a little joint, holler at the homies and shit, because it was, like, across the street from where I was staying. Mm. And uh, one day I asked him, I was like, man, how much would you charge me to throw, like, a little a party? This is during COVID, too. Mm. So I wasn't even supposed to have a party, but I was like, fuck it. Like, how much would you charge me to, like, do a pop-up? Mm. And then he was like, man, I'll hook you up. So he, that's what he did. And then the first night did good, and I was just like, I got a rush from it. I was like, man, I want to do this every day of my life. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I want to sell my shit and make money. Facts. And he was like, well, I was like, bro, how can I be a resident? And then he told me what it was, and then, like, psh, every day I went to work. You feel me? So from, like, 2020, 2022... I had like the the vintage shop with Drino, you know, pushing the merge, pushing the city forward. And then after that, like the timeline of like 2022 to 2024, me and J.I. produced it. We've been knowing each other for like years, since like 2018. Like he did a few tracks before, but me and him ain't never put like a solid uh, art Art, like I want to say a solid body of work together, you feel me? My mm -hmm. bad. Mm -hmm. And I was like, yeah, nigga, we need some shit flawless, top to bottom. You feel me? Like when you hear the shit, you be like, I'm going to play it again. Mm. And it get better and better every time. So mm. I named the project Bread and Butter. And then at this time, J.I. was working a, a lot with fucking Stink Team. You feel me? So he shot me. Um, he put together a situation where I was able to get a verse from Ralphie. And then, you know, I had put my shit together with Jake and Papa, you know, they they like the kings of the R and B shit in the A one eight, you feel me? Like and then I had my boy Ruggo, you know what I'm saying? Shout outs Ruggo. And my dog Fly out of Indiana. So like you know, I clicked up with all my homies and was like, yo, my nigga, like, let's run it. So now I'm in this position where I feel like I accomplished a lot of things, you feel me? But now I have to. I want to get to that to that undeniable like worldwide level mm. where like you know shit. You call your mom and you you tell her go pick what car you want. You know what I'm saying? Facts. Or, or, or mom get ready. I'm performing in Paris. Yeah, come to Paris. We go. We about to go perform. You feel me? Yeah. So no, I get you. You're not far from that either, bro. Yeah, man. It's just keep it, keep going and keep making sacrifices to do bigger and better things and like. Nigga, you know, just making sure keep God first, making sure you, you keep you first, too, because a lot of people get so lost and everybody, they they don't really listen to themselves. They mm. listen to, like, the overall opinion around them. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, like if the committee s says this is good, a lot of people usually tuck tail and be like, all right, I'm going to fuck with that. You feel me? Right, instead of being strong... And, and and hearing your voice and understanding that your voice counts the most than anybody around you and what I say goes. Yeah, because you're going to have to live with your decisions. Mm. And that go back to like, you going to lead or be led. You know what I'm saying? Beautiful. Well, shit, now that the conversation has rolled over into this side of things, let's start with the 10 different advice segment of the show, which is what the show is about, Mastermind Alliance. We're here to push you at home listening forward. And if you could take something out of these 10 things he's about to say, take it, apply it to your hustle, and hopefully we'll have you on this show one day talking about your success. So out of 10 things, let's start with the number 10 thing. What, what, what would it be that you would give any advice, even if it was to yourself back when you were starting, back now, something that you did that really just, you're like, ah, this works. Uh, do let's do that. And now that the audience knows your story, they'll be able to kind of put things together a bit. I think the tenth thing I would tell anybody is, you have the answers to all your problems. Mm. As, as much as like you will, you know, 
people like to deny that they don't know what to do, you know, or say, I don't know what I should or could do. You always know in your heart, in your intuition, the hardest thing you got to do first that your body be like, that's what you got to do first. That's usually what you got to do. Mm. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, if you look up at a big ass hill and you be like, how can I get up this big ass hill? It's obviously you're going to tell yourself, well, I guess I got to take the first step. You know what I'm saying? I like that. So nobody knows better than you what the first move is exactly you like you know feel it to, in your intuition in your gut it's like yes you know exactly what you have to do Yo, mm. you will always know regardless if you try to deny it or not you will always know what to do when was a time in your in your just in your life where you felt this or is it something that always comes up and you always just know to go with your gut intuition um i'm I'm always big about how certain shit make me feel. Mm. Like as much as as much as I'm a man and you know you don't want to be emotional, your emotions still have to like they got to guide you, you know, just as much as your ego guides you. Mm. So if some shit stick with me, you know, and like I can't shake it, that's what I'm fucking with, you know what I mean? Shit, bro. I I really like that one. I'm going to give that one a hand of applause right there. Appreciate you. Nah, for real cuz you're 100% right. And a lot of times when things happen, even though we have people that advise us and give us good advice, a lot of times by the time you go over there and you're done talking to them, they're telling you some shit you already kind of knew. Yeah, in your head. You already know in your heart. You just kind of needed that reassurance from them. And God, God bless having good friends that you could always go and do that. But just know that you know. Right. And I like that. Yeah, you got to have it. That's a, um, that was the number 10th one. That was a, damn, that's a good way to start right there. All right, uh, let's move into uh, number nine. Number nine, I would say tell yourself the truth. Mm. Always tell yourself the truth because people care about you how you care about you. People treat you how you treat you. Mm. So if you tell yourself the truth, People will tell you the truth. You know what I'm saying? Mm. You're going to face a lot of lies. You know what I'm saying? Obviously. But, like, if people see that, like, you truthful, they're going to be truthful. They're going to open up. They're going to tell you how they feel. And any situation you go through as far as, like, communicating with business and just communicating in general, like, tell yourself the truth and everybody else will tell you the truth. Damn, bro. That's that's fire. That's You're, you're 100% right. Because um, pretend even, yeah, like business, if if I see somebody's kind of like just trying to trick me out my money or just kind of always taking the lazy way out of shit, when it comes time for me to be real with them, I'm going to say, fuck them. I'm going to be lazy with them. Right. I'm going to treat them the way they treated my craft, my art. Right. Instead of kind of like when me and you get together, like sometimes I know you notice like, damn, this fucking kid is going above and beyond for me right now. Yeah, bro. I'm telling you, man, that I hiked the other day, I still be like, if this <laughs> wasn't in shape, bro, oh my nigga, we would not get up there. But little things like that, when you wake up and you just give a fuck about, giving a fuck about things, it's easy to do. It's, it's not like pulling a tooth. It's not like being at the dentist. Like, you want to be there for somebody. And, and I guess that's just like that team aspect in me again. Like, right. I, like if somebody is truthful enough with me to be like, you know what, nigga, I want you part of my team, I'm not going to disappoint. Right. You feel me? You so help them. Exactly. So I, I like that. And, and, and I, I 100% agree with that. Be, truth, be 100% truthful with yourself, not just so you're not walking around lying to yourself, but so people that are working with you or living with you or dealing with you can give you what you're putting out. Right. Which is truth. So they, wow. can, they can give you the truth back. I love it. That, that's, a, that's a good number nine. Shit, that's fire. Um, has there ever been another, like, another situation you could kind of compare that, that note and, and why you, you hold that, 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 that life skill or, or that... So, yeah, like be truthful you. with yourself. Um, shit, it start back to friends. Like, you could have the wrong people around you and be in denial about it. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And um, you know, you're not being truthful with yourself because you know your body responds to what you respond. You could tell your body some some bullshit. It'd be like, okay, I believe it. You know. Mm -hmm. So, 
if you know in your heart you got don't got the right people around or that got the best interests or trying to get you to the next level, like you could be delusional. So I, a few times I had to be like, bro, you better be truthful with yourself. You know mm. what I'm saying? Like they hurt, they hurting you, they mm. hindering you. You know what I'm saying? So that was a, that was a great way to put it. Cause growing up, how many times do we have friends that? You know, genuinely don't give a fuck about you, but you give a fuck about them enough that you're willing to work with on them. them with them. So hopefully one day it could reciprocate itself, but, but it, it, don't. It, it don't. And that's part of being truthful with yourself. Right. Damn. I didn't. I didn't. I wasn't looking at it like that. That that's that's another reason that's amazing not to walk around lying to yourself. Right. Damn. That's a fire one. Okay. Uh, that was number nine. What's uh? What would be a number eight? The number eight. Um, do more than you pay for. Mm. So you could be, you know, always remember more than what you what they ask for. You know what I'm saying? And um, your first impression that shit is big. You know, I used to be like, fuck it. You know, you you meet me, you get what you get. But like, the more you know, you climb the ladder. Like, it's nothing wrong with, like, wanting to make the best impression. Mm. And, and over-delivering. Yes, and over-delivering is going to help you get overly paid. You know what I'm mm. saying? Even like, if that time, the budget's just this, when it comes around for the next one, they know who to go for. Well, the universe, the universe see what you're doing for the bread. Mm. Like, it's like this. It's like if you drove from the valley to Lancaster to make $100, right? Mm. Like... And let's say it's a hundred dollars out there every day, Valley Lancaster. So, by the time you get to your seventh day, you know you had a thousand dollars almost. You had seven hundred dollars. You feel me? Mm -hmm. So like, if you would have kept considering the fact that you had to drive far, you wouldn't have got no bread at all. You right. know what I'm saying? Facts. Instead of just putting your head down. Yeah, and just doing what you do and get paid, it builds up. So that's why I'm big on like. Even with giving out merch and stuff, right? Man, I could easily be on some penny pinching shit. Like, oh man, I paid this much for the hoodie and I paid this much to get it made. But bro, like, you meeting somebody with a million followers, like, Fact. fuck that money. Like, you need to get get that attention. You know, it's gonna come back. Them eyes on it. So, give out what you what you put your money into because you putting your money into promotion now mm. like it's the same thing just a different way and it's you, actually a cheaper way yes exactly but you can't see it like that if you if you like oh I'm any pension yeah shit. I'm gonna do what they ask of me you know what I'm saying like media mediocrity like you don't want nobody oh I just do what they ask like Michael Jordan did not do what was asked he did over and beyond you feel me 100%. like that's why niggas go over and beyond trying to buy his shoes and shit 100% but like on some real shit though bro yeah that's the one just do more than you pay for that's big and and um I see how that's helped you a lot with your business and 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 just even your craft like like if a rapper asked you for a feature, if you were just like, ah, let me just do this real quick, nah, it, it wouldn't have really stuck with the people like that. But the fact that you already have that type of mental note is it, it makes sense why your music comes out the way it does. Like, 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 bro, you're one person like from the valley, from where I grew up with. That your craft is like professionals' crafts. Where every time I hear it, I'm like, oh shit. I didn't I didn't hear that the first time. Or oh shit, damn Bonnie got me with that one. Oh shit, I'm learning something about swag. Oh shit. Like these are things that professionals do. Right. And I tend to hear that in your craft. And that's why I've always liked to stay close to you and I like to work with you because I, I know iron sharp sharpens iron and, and some way, somehow there's there's an extra thought or an extra overly progression of work that's gonna happen here that i'm gonna benefit from even if it's just me paying attention to the to the to the workflow right man i appreciate that most def we, we definitely always have a, um a good understanding and good communication and some good conversations no 100 percent. okay that was number eight let's go to number seven number seven i'm trying to uh it's, it's a verse out the bible to uh to who much is given much is act, uh to oh 
to who much is given, much is required. Mm. Yeah, so like, talk about that a little bit, yeah, bro. The more, the more you climb in life, and the more you, you know, God bless you and shit. You got strict responsibilities. You, you know, it's like a nigga with a Rolls Royce. Like, you think his car payment of being three to five thousand, you think they care about him not making that? They want their money. You know what I'm saying? It's like. If somebody asks you to do something and you want to be in a bigger position, you got stricter responsibilities. So it's more shit you got to do. You know what I'm saying? You get blessed with a lot of money. If you don't have habits to keep it, mm. you will lose it. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Because you're not doing what's required with your strict responsibilities, with your new blessings. Mm. So when you get new blessings... It's always a stricter responsibility to, you know, the higher up you go, you know, like it's it's more shit you got to do to sustain your success, you know, to be able to hold it because it's easy to get it. It's even easier to lose it. You know what I'm saying? So a hundred percent. Just know to who much is given, much is required. And I could relate to that because back to even the, the Rolls Royce. Yeah. Not, and not just the payments, but now the person driving the Rolls Royce. You don't, you can't drive that Rolls Royce the way you drive the, the Honda or the, the Civic or the whatever. Like, there's potholes you really got to watch out for because that uh, is not just a $400, $500 fix now. Now that yeah. that's a $4,000, $6,000 fix. Yes. Or even the, the people. Ten. Yeah, or even the people you allow into your car. It, you can't just be offering niggas rides the way you used to when you had a regular car now because these people that's jumping in your car. They don't got a Rolls Royce, so they're coming in with that Honda mentality into your Rolls Royce. Right. So now they go, they go open the door and bang some shit, not be mindful of the curve because they not mindful of, it's not something they have to be mindful with the shit they got. Right. So they don't know this a Rolls Royce. They don't know you could press this button and this shit opens on its own. They don't know not to slam the fucking door. Like, so... I understand yes, <laughs> what you're man. talking about. Yes, and, bro. And, and you said it perfect. If if you don't appreciate this stuff the same way you got it, you're going to lose it. Facts. And and these are lessons of people that come from nothing to something. Yes. Because if, if you come from a family where the Rolls Royce is already the regular degular... You know these little things. You, you, it's been it's been it's been already taught to you. It's encrypted. In it's you. encrypted in you. You don't even think about it. But when you come from nothing, a fucking something, these is little things you're constantly gotta check, check, check right. to to just sustain what you got. We're not even talking about getting more of this, just to keep what you got. So wow. Anything out the Bible is always gonna be truth, but shit, that's a good one right there. Yeah, man, that was a that was a really good number seven. I I um I value that I value that one a lot because they don't teach you this shit. And when I say they, it's like this is life. This is life teachings right here. Right. You know, like the journey we're on. And if you're listening to this and you ain't got shit, just know, man, like. You could have it all, but you got to sustain it all. Sustain it. You know what so, I mean? So. And and I'm really glad you said that because, like, I'm proud of you, bro. We've, we've come a long way. Yeah, man, for sure. For sure, for sure. Yeah, and, and, and it ain't about just... And more to go. And more to go. And, and we're ready for these life lessons. And, and these little first lessons is teaching us how to get ready for the bigger shit. Yeah, bro, because so, life is definitely like that. It's a... Sometimes you got to learn some fucked up lessons to, to really understand the bigger picture. And that's why this podcast is here. This is what a mastermind alliance is. When an alliance comes together, I might not have to take the L he took because I'm listening. I'm part of this alliance, you know? So there might be little things you going through that I'm going to learn from because we're part of an alliance. So that's what this podcast is really about. And and it's it's about you at home not taking that L that we had to go through. Or even if you do take it, because some things in life you got to go through to actually get. Hopefully, you you don't get into a cycle where you're just like, oh, my God, why me? You know, you, you get into that L and you're like, oh, shit, Vani and, and Nesta really was talking about this shit. Let me correct myself quicker. So that's really what this alliance is about. 
So um, yeah, that was a good that was a good number seven. Um, all right, we're walking into six. Number six, your mistakes have to be just as big as your success. Mm. Because it's like anything, you know what I'm saying? Like it's like practicing the dunk. You gonna try to jump as much as you can. You gonna hit the net. Some you gonna keep hitting the net, right? Or sometimes hit your fucking finger and get that blister. Yeah, but see, you start remembering these little things of like, man, I gotta touch the rim. I you gotta, I, I gotta do a flawless dunk. Yeah, I got, I have to. You know what I'm saying? Because you, you know, know these L's. Yeah, you you know the losses you taking and you steady taking them and you steady taking them and you like fuck that. I'm I'm feeling higher though. I'm feeling higher. You know what I'm saying. And right. sometimes niggas don't be seeing that like like they'll see somebody successful and laugh at them if they fall, right? Right. But then it'd be cool when they come back up, right? Right. Because it's like it has to balance out. Your fuck ups have to be just as big as the success. Like mm. you have to be willing to fail as big as you succeed. You feel Got me? Got it. I get it. There's there's no big return unless you're ready to take a big loss. Yes. And what do they always say? Oh, sometimes before you get it all, you gotta lose everything. Right. You know what they I'm saying? They do say that. You know what I'm saying? And how many successful people do we know damn near came from nothing to something, lost it. Yeah. Got that bitch back though. Right. And it's all about like not being scared to, to roll the dice. You know what I'm saying? Like if if you uh, want to be a successful person, you have to know how to gamble too. Mm. And like I don't really like gamble in Vegas like that, but on some like my craft, you got to know when to gamble because if you ain't willing to fuck up, if you ain't willing to fail big, you're not willing to win big. Mm. Like... It's like playing in the finals and being scared to shoot the ball. Like, nah, if you already worked your ass off to get here, so you either go win big today or you go lose, lose big. big. Yeah, so. but, but either way, it will balance out. Like, niggas, some niggas lose big, right? But then the team want to re-sign them for the contract because they were so good, nigga, they got to the finals, but they might have needed one more piece, you feel me? So they're like, fuck it, we're going to give you another $40 million. Facts. Just to, you know, you nigga and you lost. You know what I'm saying? Right. You lost. And they still willing to fuck with you because you chose to to try to win, win big. big. Instead of instead of being being dormant. I, yeah. I it reminds me of that that J C verse. Um I rather live uh huh enormous than live dormant. dormant. That's, That's how, how I'm on it. it. Yeah. Bet uh, a better trip to Cabo on it. Yeah, you talking um reasonable reasonable dead doubts. Per, yeah, dead presidents dead too. Dead presidents too, yeah. And 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 yeah, that that's what you mean right there. Right. You got to be ready to lose big when the moment is there cuz I, what we're talking about right here is like final moments. You're in the finals. This is, this is championship moments. This is they just passed you the ball moments. Right. And there's going to be certain moments in life where you got to be ready to make that fucking shot. And yes, you got you got to understand you could you could lose it all right there too. But put that fucking put that put that jersey on and go make your shot. Yeah, bro. Can't be scared. Scared money don't make no money. Mm. I like that. And um uh, I'm the same way. I don't I don't really gamble in Vegas. The most we used to gamble was uh shooting dice cuz right there it was me versus you. I yeah, I, I, yeah. I wasn't against the house. I didn't have to I had a whole table you got to bet with and shit. Exactly. But one thing I do bet in every day is my my career, my my success, my business, my relationships, my opportunities. I bet I I, I put it all on the fucking line and I I say to the Lee Let's get that shit. No, dead ass. Okay, that was a good number six. All right, number five. We're halfway through. You versus you. Hmm. It's it's all about like, nigga, what you feed yourself mentally, spiritually, you gonna get back. You know what I'm saying? And um, you know, if you tell yourself bad shit, bad shit happen. Hmm. You know, it's just what it is. This is just what you attract. You gotta. Self talk is very important. Mm. Even when shit ain't going your way, you could just be like, "Man, I'm thankful I'm in this position because somebody in a way worse position than me." Hundred percent. You know what I'm saying? So, I'm um, I'm real big on the. I know I'm my own enemy. Mm. Like you, you gotta be able to have a strong will with yourself. 
Mm. That's how people lose themselves. They lose their will. Mm. They lose touch with what they like, you know, and all of that. So, you know, just keeping a strong hold on that. You know what I'm saying? Knowing that, like, I'm my worst enemy. Mm. So, like, when shit get hard, I'm the reason why it's getting hard. Because mm. I'm over here making it harder. Mm. Like, you know what I'm saying? So Yeah, and being, and being so down to earth and humble with yourself where you could constantly look into the mirror and, 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 and not be a fucking victim of, Oh, this had what? Nah, nigga. Why did this happen? Oh, because yeah. I put myself here. Because I did this. Because I, I. Uh, yeah, yeah. Me you, versus me. You do. You definitely don't want to give nobody power. Because that's when, when you say it's somebody else's fault, you giving them power over your life. Mm. And I believe, you know, you know, not being sexist, men are powerful. So, like, to be a powerful man, you have to be in control of like everything. You feel yeah. me? You gotta be in control, cause good or bad. Yeah, like when people call other people controlling, like I feel that I get it, but I also don't think that's a bad thing sometimes because somebody who got heavy control is like heavily aware of shit. You know what I'm saying? And, and making sure this shit play out right. Right, right, right. And cause he they might be controlling cause you fucking up. Like exactly, like exactly, <laughs> nigga. I wouldn't have to be so controlling. If you playing your part, if we if we could talk, if we could execute, but if you if now we're at war and I don't happen to controlly move you out the fucking way, you just got shot. Yeah. So my bad for being controlled. If I just saved your life, I just saved the play. I just saved this whole fucking thing. So control is not bad. <laughs> and I'm I'm not even a controlling person, but I I I, I get it because I my mentor that I lived with was fucking controlling, and guess what? I learned, nigga. And a lot of times he he wasn't controlling the days I was on point. The days I was on point wasn't shit to control. You on point. The days I wasn't on point, I'm walking backwards. He'll be like, duck. I, if I was to be like, oh, why duck? Nigga, you just got hit. Me, me, and my, me and my mentor, I knew we were like this because I was walking backwards one day because I was just so charismatic and in the, in the moment that I wasn't looking where I was going. And he literally said, duck. And anybody else would look at somebody and be like, why are you trying to control me? Nigga, I ducked. Got the fuck out the way. Bro, I clearly missed this thing that was going to bang my fucking head. And I'm, I, when I say bang my head, I was going to bang my head because I was moving so charismatically. Yeah. And, and, and that little moment made me appreciate him so much because, like you said, when somebody being controlling, they're not just trying to control. They, they, they really looking out for your best interest because they're aware. Yes, they're aware of the situation for sure. So me versus me, damn, that's crazy. That's dope. And um I, I, I really like that that you're humble enough to even say that, bro, because as an artist, as a fashion designer, as a owner of a brand, it's so easy to play victim. So many different situations that could occur throughout any day or throughout any workflow where you could just be a a, a, a nanny, a, like a Karen, a bitch about it. But in, but when you understand this is happening to me because of me, that puts you at such a different advantage. Yeah, man. It's all about, you know, you got to be a man before anything. You know what I'm saying? So, like, just being a man of, like, a, a great outlook and great accountability. Because, mm. you know, accountability, you're going to face it at many times in your life. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't, it could be anything. It could be fucking love, finances, fucking your body. Accountability is going to be somewhere in there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, just being able to be like, you know what? I'm going to hold myself accountable regardless of if I'm doing good or something or doing bad. That's always the main thing, you know? And that goes back to being in control of shit. Like, when you're in control... You in control of accountability too. Mm. You in control of like what you add and what you take away. So yeah, that's my take on that one. I fuck with that one a lot, man. That was a good number five. That was a good halfway. And it's funny, we're halfway, me versus me, puts us middle ground. Hell yeah. I'll be looking at shit like that. All right, let's get into number four. Um, I wanna say attitude of gratitude. God be thankful. Every day, even when you like in the best of positions, mm. because 
God give, God take. And he give fast, he take fast. You feel me? Mm. And like when he when he give, he over give. When he snatch, he over snatch. You mm. feel me? Mm. So like I'm real big on like, bro, I could be in a room full of people and bro, everybody got more than me and I could be fucked up. I'll be I'll just be thankful that I'm in the room mm. or thankful that I gotta, you know. Most of the time, I'm thankful for like AD average daily living. Like, man, thank you for letting me have a car, a place to stay, let me be able to shower, let me be able to, if I want to go get some fucking food, I can open my fridge, shit like, you know, a lot of people don't be thankful for the small stuff because, bro, I remember being on my mama couch and I remember like having all my investments, you feel me, into my clothes and I was making money, but like, my attitude wasn't all the way there yet. Mm. Like, I wasn't thankful. And then I just remember, like, nigga nightly being on that couch, and I'd be like, man, you know what? I'm thankful I'm going to get up out of here. <laughs> like, I, I used to be like, bro, <laughs> I'm thankful I'm going to get up out of here one day, and I'm thankful that, you know, the clothing is going to get me up out of my mama's house. You feel me? That's powerful. And, um, bro, just, I know, the, I know the attitude of the gratitude, you know what I'm saying, bro? Just... Be you know, be thankful for your parents, be thankful for your family. Nigga just it's always something to be thankful for, you know. Even when even when like you in a real fucked up position. Mm -hmm. Like it could be with money, it could be mentally, it could be emotionally, mm -hmm. it could just it you could just be somewhere you're not supposed to be, right? Mm. But if you find at least two things, I try to do three. If you can find two things that you could be thankful for. Like, you know, if you say you go to jail, thankful I'm alive, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Say, man, say you lost your job. Well, at least at least I had a job I could put on a resume. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm. I, I could show them that I got a history of working. I got you. So just, you know, trying to see the brighter side of shit because it's a lot of bullshit I deal with daily, you know what I'm saying? Especially being a creative in California, mm. you hear some wild shit, nigga, you know? <laughs> like so just you know attitude of gratitude then always be thankful and just know that like if you being put through it you could get to it you know mm. that's that's fire attitude of gratitude man that shit goes a long fucking way and um just to drop a little sasson on what you talking about hell yeah i've been so grateful for everything, good or bad, that I've found a cheat code. Every problem has something in it called a silver lining. And if you're not grateful for whatever situation you're in, you will not find the silver lining. I'm, and I'm telling you, it'd be the dumbest shit. For example, I got hit in a parking lot. I could I could have made a fuss about it. I could have got my insurance and all that involved, which I did and everything. But throughout it all, I was like, where's the silver lining? And I, I'm only bringing this example because it's going to be easy for the audience to understand. The silver lining in this accident was they really didn't hurt shit. I'm good. I'm not too hurt. But the silver lining was one of my boys knew an accident lawyer that now made a bunch of money appear out of nowhere that I wasn't even thinking about when the accident happened. But the fact that I was positive when the accident happened and didn't become an introvert, I was able to find and talk to my boy that was able to introduce me to the plug. That was the silver lining in that situation. Right. Another one, pretend you with a girl or something, you guys break up. The silver lining in that is you are now open to meet a new person. So again, when things go bad, just don't become a victim and walk around with that victim, but use the attitude of gratitude, cheat code, to find the silver lining. And to this day, I, 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 I just like to say this, but I'm more excited when bad shit happens because I'm looking for the silver lining now compared to when good things are happening because the good's already going good. And guess what? The good sometimes is just good. 
But for one thing I've come to find out is that when things go bad, that silver lining, if you could grab it, grab it and just attach yourself to it, you're going to win big. Definitely. It's like COVID. When COVID happened, the world shut down. If you found the silver lining in COVID, I know y'all all got y'all checked. <laughs> yeah. I'm just saying. No doubt. Try to find it and it's always there. So I could I could I I resonate a lot with that one. Attitude of gratitude. And w- the reason why I've always carried this energy is because I come from Dominican Republic, a third world country where my nigga, if you're there, you're there, you're stuck, you know? And I got to come to the United States at an early age. So even when things went bad here, I would always say, at least I'm in the USA. Facts. You know? And um that energy really has got me to where I'm at today. So I think that's a really good number four. Thank you, brother. That's a fire number four. All right. Number three. Number three. Mm, collaboration. Mm. Number three, stay collaborating with people. Because isolation is dangerous. You, You can start believing your own bullshit. You need somebody to, like, you need people around to, like, criticize you a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Nothing is ever perfect. So just, I felt like the next one is collaboration. Like, you know, don't be scared to see something special in other people so you can help more people. And sometimes, you know, collaboration is 60, 40, 70, 30, 50, 50, but, like, Collaborate with a lot of people. Don't just get stuck on, you know, make sure you you out there meeting people and and spreading your energy so your vision could get seen, you know, Mm. with more people and more people could describe your energy. So when you collaborate, it can help you get to the next level because something you couldn't explain, five people that came across you, they could finally explain it for you, Mm. you know. Facts. Or if you could collaborate with somebody that could get to those five people that normally would have never fuck with you. Right. Your message still got to those five people because you were strong enough to collaborate with the right person that got it into that door. Exactly. I fuck with that. Collaboration is huge. Everything I do is some way, somehow collab, collabing on some way. Well, yeah. right now, shit. Facts. For sure. A hundred percent, man. The power of collaboration is amazing. Uh, give us two, uh, give us an example with music where, a collaboration went crazy for you that you never thought it was going to go as far as it did? And then, if you can, uh, with uh, clothing also. Well, shit, the first one was with uh, my boy Drino. Like, he just had a vintage shop, you know. Mm-hmm. And I just thought, you know, it was cool to come kick it, smoke weed, and look at all the fly shit. But, you know, he helped me really get my foot in the door with, like, retail and understanding, like, my audience, because I had, like, a, a hub now to really, like, hone in on, like, what people was fucking with. Mm. So he helped me, like, be able to hone in on my my crowd and really know what they wanted of me. That was one. And then the second one what was the second for one. For music. And the second one for music, um, shit, it was cool. It was definitely cool collaborating. You know what I'm saying? I want to say with J.I. Mm. Um, because... We've been knowing each other for a fucking long time, you know what I'm saying? And he done done sessions for us and stuff, and we already had, like, a rapport. But it was cool to see him mature in music, and then I'm maturing in music, and then, you know, we just making some good shit, and, you know, he was already a good friend of mine. So I felt like I didn't know that our collab was going to be that that fun, you know, that crazy, because... You know, we did a lot of big numbers with that tape for Bread and Butter and, you know, shit just in general. Me and him, you know, day in, day out was just on some, like, we locked in type shit. Mm. That's dope, bro. And um, sometimes, ain't it funny how God will make you collaborate with somebody you're supposed to be collaborating yourself on, like, a personal project, but then God will kind of, like, put another type of thing going on where y'all kind of fuck with each other and it's like, hey, this could be a thing. And right. then it takes the guts within us to be like, you know what? I'm going to get with this nigga and we go work on something for us. Yeah, man. It's, um goes back to just collaboration in general, just, you know, not being scared to tell somebody like, yo, bro, I'm a fan of what you do. 
mm-hmm. and I feel like our shit will go hard together. You know what I'm saying? And, and as simple as that sound, you'd be surprising how hard. Oh, that's hard to do. Yeah. Especially like in this industry, you know, it's an egotistic type of thing. So, you know, a lot of niggas will be fucking with you or you can fuck with them, but it's like... Y'all both artists, so y'all can't really like, hey, yo, bro, I'll fuck with you. You know what I'm saying? Right, like, right, right, right. It'd be, it be a lot of like me mugging and arm crossing and shit. But, you know, at the end of the day, you know, give people their flowers while they still here. I want to say, yeah, me and JR did that fool. And uh, shit, I, you know, I just enjoy that when I get to do some shit with people that I've been fucking with and like, we take it farther than we ever took it, you know? Mm. And that's what it's about, man. Together, we're stronger. Facts. Power in numbers. And it's facts. Dude. Just because I want to use this, niggas do be sizing each other up when in reality, they just should just be like, yo, bro, let's work together. And the yeah. minute they do, it'd be, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it'd be out of here, though. A whole and lot of ego. It's crazy. All right. Number two. Number two. Unwavering faith. Mm. Like, that's all you're going to have in this game in, is unwavering faith and entertainment and life and whatever the fuck you do. You got to believe, like, you know, like, it's, you got to have it in your soul. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't give a fuck what happened. I don't give a fuck what's going on. Like, I know I'm supposed to be here and I'm going to take this position far as I'm supposed to. And matter of fact, I'm going to take it past where I'm supposed to. You know mm. what I'm saying? And just, you know, if you don't believe in God, shit, hopefully you believe in the universe or whatever. You know what I'm saying? But I believe in God and I believe in unwavering faith of like, bro, I would have been stopped fucking with the industry. You feel me? But I always had this faith of like, I know my position. I know where I'm going to take myself. Mm. You feel me? But I just feel like. You an entertainer too. You do, you do. You know what I'm saying. You a photography, videography, all of that, and you know that like sometimes this shit ain't worth it. Like mentally, it's draining, and then like a lot, a lot of times. And then a lot of the times that shit was fun, it ain't fun no more because it's business. You know what I'm saying? And you can't really, you can't really open up and be the same person because it's business. You gotta protect yourself. Mm. But um, I would say unwavering faith, man, and like. I done been through a lot of like, you should do this and you should do this and a lot of people telling me what the fuck to do with my life, you know what I'm saying? But like at the end of the day, I never gave a fuck. Mm. You feel me? Like, <laughs> like, like I listen, like I hear them, but like I got an unwavering faith that like, even if you think I can't do what the fuck you said I'm going to do, I'm going to do it. I don't care how long it's going to take. You feel me? It's not about the time with me. It's about getting it done. So... Mm. I just always got this unwavering faith of like, bro, I don't give a fuck. If the world is ending, I'll be good. You know what I'm saying? Fact. Somehow, some way, you know, when shit ain't going my way, when things ain't working, I always say a prayer like, just because it ain't going my way, you know, don't believe I don't believe. You mean? I mean, don't mean I still don't believe. You know what mm. I'm saying? Like. Mm. And you got to let God know, like, you believe in hard times, too. A lot of niggas, a lot of niggas tell you that good stuff. You feel yeah. me? They they want you to feel the butterflies and all that shit. Nigga, this shit dark. You know, the industry hard. You might fuck around going depression. You might really be dope, but you might not have the people around you validating your talent. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Or you might... You know, or you might not be that good, and you got a lot of people telling you you. You know what I'm saying? So, hundred percent. Either way, either position, have unwavering faith, and um, just believe when you can't believe no more. Like I don't give a fuck your mom, your dad, your sister, your cousin, your girlfriend, whoever. Like if if they tell you you can't do something, and you know in your heart you could do that shit, go do it. Yeah, you ain't gotta make a hundred announcements. You ain't gotta be like, look at me, just pop out and show niggas. You feel mm. me? Like that was perfect. Yep. That belief. Right, bro. That shit's strong. That that man. It, even if you don't listen to none of the other nine things or the other eight things you've said, just with that one right there, you gonna make it. Thank you. And that's the beautiful part about belief, bro. 
The power of belief is crazy. Yeah, bro. You can make... Like, bro, think about this. In the Bible, you know, they say that if you believe that he rose from the dead, you feel me, and his son died on the cross for your sins, that you'll have everlasting life, right? Mm-hmm. You know what kind of belief you got to have to say, you know, if somebody came back from the dead? That's what I mean by unwavering faith. You feel me? That part. To to put your faith or put your logic into some shit like that. Mm. Like, that something could come back from the dead. Facts. That's like your first step into like spirit, spirituality is like how heavy is your belief. Mm. You feel me? And like, faith is the number one superpower and earth, you know what I'm saying? Think about niggas who are in bad accidents. They, oh, they ain't never going to walk again. Nigga get shot a hundred times. He ain't never going to breathe again. These people come back because of faith and unwavering belief. You know what I'm saying? Amen. So, yeah, bro. That's a big one. Keep that unwavering faith. Fuck, this, fuck your circumstance. Your circumstance is just a reflection of how you feel. It's not what you really are. Mm. You talking that shit. That was a great number two. Now for the last one. Number one. You got to be selfish. Mm. If you're going to be successful, you got to be into yourself. And Mm. that's just what it is. Your parents, your your brothers, your cousins, nobody ever going to understand that shit. But, like... If you're going to really get the gold, nigga, you're going to get the Stanley Cup, you know what I'm saying, the pennant, you know what I'm saying, the, the NFL Super Bowl, you're going to have to be care. selfish. selfish. You're going to have to care about yourself. You're going to be like, nigga, if anybody get put first, it's me. Mm. You feel me? And that's where high standards come in because you put a certain standard for yourself and then people fall in line. You know what I'm saying? So that's why, I like, yeah, I feel fucked up. Sometimes you got to make decisions, you know, you don't want to make. But shit, you got to be selfish. Because at the end of the day, if if self is not okay, how can I fish? You know what I'm saying? Like, nigga, I ain't going to be able to catch nothing. My head fucked up. Mm-hmm. You know, my, my whole energy's fucked up. Mm-hmm. Like, I got to really be selfish. I got to, like, bro, I used to laugh at my dad as a kid when, like, you know, they'd be like, oh, I want to have alone time and shit like that, right? And then you become a grown-ass man, and then you start realizing, like, alone time is a part of selfishness. Like, mm-hmm. nigga, like what they used to say, I need time to think. I need, mm-hmm. to, I got to hear myself think. Yeah. I didn't believe that at first until you start coming. getting Getting older and understanding the, the, the value and the, the love in that self. Yes. Self-time, that self-time out, that self-time to think. Yes, and you got to be about yourself. Mm. That's why people hate, oh, he's cocky, or people be like, oh, he's arrogant. It's because you're really in tune with yourself. You know what you like. You know how you like to feel. Mm. You know what you're giving off to the world. You know. Mm. So you know self, and a lot of people don't know self. So when when they see you living that way, that you look ignorant to you them. offend them, yeah, because they're lost in another understanding. This goes back to the leader not being led. You feel me? And yes, like, sir. Nigga being selfish. It's like you got to even be selfish with your with your thinking. Mm. Like you can't just let anybody tell you some shit and you just be like, oh, you know what? I think I'm a ponder on that. Like right. you can't even put be around niggas talking about some bullshit. You feel Facts. me? Like, like that shit rub off on you real bad. Very strong. Yeah. So you gotta you gotta make sure, nigga, wherever you putting self at, nigga, be selfish. You know, make sure that you you with the right motherfuckers. Mm. Cause like I used to, I used to like. You know, I knew a lot of niggas who knew a lot of niggas. You know, they tell you who they know. You mm-hmm. feel me? And that used to be cool. But then I used to, like, be like, damn. Who are you, nigga? Yeah, who are you? <laughs> Until I had to sit back one day and realize, like, famous people and just successful people in general, selfish is one of their biggest things that they famous for, being selfish. You think of somebody famous, you think about somebody who's into they self. You feel me? Who's into what they like mm-hmm. in the most craziest way. 
nigga, like they don't give a fuck about nothing. Nothing this else. Is, this is what they into. You said it perfect. So developing that self love. Yes, selfish is not bad. Selfish is not bad. I used to be like, you know, selfish fucked up until you see like all the greats and you hear some of their stories and shit like, nigga, Kobe and Jordan to tell you straight up, like, I wasn't passing him the ball. Like, Facts. Like, nigga, I know what I can do. You know what I'm saying? Bro, Kobe, Kobe wouldn't even ask for the ball. He would, he would hiss like a snake. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know how much you have no respect for somebody if you're asking for the ball that way. Facts. But he's so selfish and he give my fuck like give me the ball. Give me the ball, bro. I know what I'm about to do. I, and and one thing I the reason why I say Kobe is because when you're being selfish, it doesn't mean you're saying fuck everybody. No, you're being selfish enough to win the game for everybody. Exactly. Cause you know that you could do it yourself. You could do it with a team. Mm -hmm. It's okay about having a team. Nobody say you can't have a team, but it's got to be a point where even your team knows, like nigga, give him the ball. He don't give a fuck when it comes to these things. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? It's like your boss. He don't give a fuck about oh your car wouldn't start for five minutes. He like nigga, I'm gonna fire your ass if you don't get to work, cause I got a fucking place to run. Facts, you know what I'm or or even some work opportunities, they might not even fire you. They just the lack of respect for you within them, just they're like don't even think about you no more, cause yeah. they're, they're being so selfish with the grand things. Yes, side of things. Right. So I really like how you said that. Like, if I'm not taking care of self, how can I fish? And man, that. That 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 fucking you hit it on the head right there, bro. It's the it's the truth, and it's a hard it's a hard one, cause like your family, people close to you. It depends, you know. Being selfish could be all type of different scenarios, you know. Yeah. It could be a heavy one or a light one, but if we gonna say if it's a heavy one, you know, sometimes you gotta live in delusion. Mm. You gotta live like with those regrets. Well, you got to live with the vision. You got to see it. Mm. You got to will your way. Mm -hmm. Because if you're not selfish, it's like this. If everybody showed up to work late and nobody got fired, the company is going to go down. You know what I'm saying? After a while, like, yeah, niggas just kept showing up late to work. You right. know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> right, right. And he didn't punish nobody. He wasn't telling nobody. So niggas just kept getting later and later. You feel me? Facts. The selfish side guy would be like, I don't give a fuck. Who work here? They ain't gonna disrespect this company or exactly. what I'm doing. So if you late, fuck you. Exactly. And so and usually that's how it be. Like you you disrespect the boss, even if he ain't the one that's gonna fire you. Guess what? The nigga under him is walking into your door and letting you know, hey, we appreciate you, but you know, boss don't fuck with this. You you gotta go. Exactly, bro. Be and the reason why that is is because the boss is so caught up into this big success he don't even got time to bring his vibration down to fire your dumb ass over being late exactly because you taking away from the plan and the and that's why having a, a strong team is amazing and i appreciate you saying that yeah because next time i hire somebody or put somebody in position i'm gonna remind them to be selfish with this company right because it matters this your opportunity this is your time and bro we gotta you know, you got to really hone in your opportunity and really just be serious and, you know, take shit more serious because in these times, a lot of people, they don't like discipline, you feel me? And we grew up, I feel like, like our grandparents. That was the name of the game for us. Niggas was, bro, remember the most disrespectful motherfuckers used to be scared of their parents? Facts. Like, it used to be a little line I was drawing, like, nigga, I'm a fool over here. But, but at home, fuck yeah, no. Yeah, when pops or granny or whoever come It'd around. be a whole nother nigga. You're like, hey, nigga, you wasn't like this at school. Matter of fact, I don't even want to hang out with you. You're yeah. not the same. Yeah. It's like, hey, bro, when we over here at this house, we just don't do this. You know what I'm saying? Do that. So, <laughs> that's, that's where I feel like people scared to, like, nigga, draw the line with shit. It, it don't be no boundaries nowadays. You know what I'm saying? Like... Mm. And a lot of shit, everything is taken to the most extreme. Facts. Like, it ain't, 
It ain't like a nigga. Remember back in the day, like when you was a kid, like if some shit came on, you wasn't supposed to watch, they'd be like, go to another room. Quick. You know what I'm saying? Now yeah. it's like, he gonna see this shit on TikTok. Anymore. Right. And it's like, no, he not. Yeah. Go in the fucking room. No, nah, facts. You're right. Or there was a time of the the time of the night where, all right, y'all, time to get to bed. Time for the grown folks to watch the grown shit. Right. It's, nigga, y'all be watching, they be watching some crazy shit. You crazy like, Man, I can't shit. wait till I get old to be able to watch the movie. Yeah, to stay up and, and watch this shit. Yeah, nah, facts. Ooh. But nowadays, it's all it's all mushy. It's all, ain't no lines. It's yeah. all fucked up. People scared, to, people scared to, like, have some type of order, you know, and that go mm-hmm. back to be the leader or be led. Man. Bro, you touched on a lot of amazing things today, bro. Appreciate you, man. Hell Just yeah. being your homie, I already knew some stuff we was going to get into, but man, there was a lot of shit that you spoke about that I was like, fuck. It's dope. Thank you, man. I'm glad the opportunity, man. You asked some good questions, man. You know what I'm saying? Really, really touched the surface on what we was trying to project and let the world, you know, see what we was on. So, you know, this Mastermind Alliance, man. Shout out to the whole A1A. You know, we're going worldwide. Thank you to Ernesto for having me. You know what I'm saying? Y'all tune in with him and the whole movement. And we're going to have some more, you know, merch and content coming out for y'all, too. So tap in, man. Let's get it. Stay tuned.